Hey everybody, Matt Colville here. We launched a Kickstarter a couple weeks ago and there's only a few days left in it and I thought it'd be a good opportunity for us to go over the frequently asked questions that we get for this Kickstarter. We have raised an enormous amount of money in a relatively short period of time and it brings me personally and all of us an enormous amount of joy to know that you folks are interested in the same stuff that we're interested in and that we say, hey, what about this? A whole bunch of people are like, yes, please. And we've already seen, there's a, we have a channel in our Discord just for flea mortals. I encourage you to come by and check it out because there are literally dozens, if not more, people there giving their reports of having used the monsters from the packets. They've used the Overmind, they used the goblins, they love the minion rules. And it's really, really cool for us to see, not only do people want the book, but they are actually using the monsters in it in their games and reporting back with great success. So if that sounds interesting to you, we encourage you to check out our Discord. There's a link in the doobly-doo. Let's get on with the frequently asked question. Probably the question we get the most is, will there be virtual tabletop support for this product? And the answer is yes. Uh, we plan on supporting three different platforms, Fantasy Grounds, Roll20, and Foundry. And we are talking to all of them right now, but they each work differently. So it's possible that when the pledge manager launches, which is how you can customize your pledge and add or remove things, which is usually sometime after the Kickstarter stops, so some number of uh, days or weeks after the end of the Kickstarter, uh, you may be able to add virtual tabletop support for one or more of these platforms. It's unsure exactly how it's, we are unsure exactly how it's all gonna work because they're each different companies and they each have different processes, but certainly by the time the PDF is done, you folks will be able to get VTT support for it. These discussions with these other platforms are ongoing. Uh, we have really good relationships already with them. We are good friends with the folks over at Fantasy Grounds. And in fact, you can already, if you want to try out our design, if you want to try out our goblins or the Overmind or the Lightbender or any of that stuff, you can check it out right now. There's a link in the doobly-doo to the Fantasy Grounds module for the first packet from Flea Mortals, the one that you've already downloaded and checked out. You can now try these monsters tonight in your game in Fantasy Grounds. Some people want to know, and this is this is reasonable from your point of view, They are people are asking like, well, if I buy the PDF or if I buy the hardcover or if I get you know the limited edition or whatever, will I get the VTT support free? Nope, these are all other companies' products. They're not our products, they're other companies' products and they all have their own stores and their own processes and they, they charge money for these things. So no, the VTT support will not be free. These questions aren't really in any order, by the way, apart from the virtual, the virtual tabletop question was the most frequently asked question. All the rest of these questions are just sort of random and in no particular order. One question we get a lot is, will there be psionic monsters in this book? Yes, there will be, because in the core rules, there are some monsters that we all know that have crazy mental powers. And the fiction is that they are somehow distinct from spellcasting or from prayers. They're their own thing. And this goes all the way back to optional rules that were in the very first uh, Player's Handbook Dungeon Master's Guide back in 1979, 1980. And the answer is yes, we are going to have our own versions of those you know, telepathic psionic monsters. They're going to have their own cool special abilities. And indeed, that is one of the reasons we started working on. The talent, the talent is MCDM's custom fifth edition class for players that want to run a character that's more like Jean Grey from the X-Men or Eleven from Stranger Things, who doesn't use spells, doesn't use prayers, just literally the, the strength of their mind. And it's a little bit more science fictional, which I know some people don't like, um, but I think this stuff is super cool. One of the ways the talent can learn new powers is by seeing other people using their powers. And then there's a role you can make. And if you succeed, then now you know how to do that because you saw some monster using it on you. So we need those monsters in this book. So yes, those classic monsters that you're familiar with that have their own crazy mental abilities, we are gonna have our own versions of those in our book and they will have their own cool mental abilities based on our new version of psionics, which is currently in testing. And that leads to the next question is, will we see revisions to the gemstone dragons from strongholds and followers those of you who don't know the gemstone dragons and strongholds and followers are psionic creatures right they manifest psionic powers and we are revising those but i think you will only see like one of them in this book because they're not really native to the to at least my setting a lot of these monsters are extra planar creatures and we'll have a few of those in this book like i would love to see some the mcdm version of some interdimensional toad beasts i think that would be very cool but i think by and large 
the heavily extra planar stuff is gonna be for some other future product. So some gemstone dragons, yes, maybe one, maybe a couple of more, but the full panoply of all the different kinds and different ages, not for this book. A lot of people wanna know about the enemy parties. What are the enemy parties gonna be? We don't know, They're, that's what we're paying, that's the R&D, that's what you're paying for. You're paying for our research and development. We're gonna hire a bunch of freelancers and each one of them is probably gonna end up with their own party that they're gonna be in charge of and there's gonna be some back and forth and outlining to make sure they don't step on each other's toes, right? You want all the characters in each of these parties to be unique, distinct. They want their each group to have its own kind of look and feel and background and history and personalities. And so you know, the writers and designers are gonna have to make sure that there's not a lot of overlap there. But apart from the Black Iron Pack, Act, which is mine, I'll be doing that one. Apart from the Black Iron Pact, which was the proof of concept for this stuff, then I don't know what the other ones are gonna be. I'm, ex I'm as excited to find out as you people are. This is a question we saw a lot out, actually interestingly, outside of the MCDM community and ecology. I think most of the people that hang out in our Twitch streams and stuff like that, they know, they know what's going on in the world. But we had a bunch of people say, how come the PDF is 40 bucks instead of some cheaper number? And how come the book is 70 bucks? And the answer is, because it's a big book. It's gonna be the biggest book we've made so far. And that's one reason. And then there's another reason and that is shit is expensive right now, yo. And not, that's no joke. Um, especially one thing that's really expensive right now is paper. So yeah, getting the physical book printed, these things cost money. And also realistically, we were kind of underselling our previous products, especially our first product, because it was our first one and we didn't know anything about cost of goods and that kind of stuff. And, you know, we had some math and spreadsheets, but we have learned a lot since then. And it reflects that. It was really interesting actually to see Monty Cook's new Kickstarter. I'll put a link in the doobly-doo. Hopefully it's still running. Monty Cook's new Kickstarter also had their hardcover book at 70 bucks, which there was no collusion or, and there, I think their Kickstarter launched literally the same day as ours. And so it was really cool and kind of like a vote of confidence to see another company, a highly professional experienced company was going to the same price point that we were going to for the same reasons. Like I said, there was no discussion or collusion there between us. What about EU or UK or Canadian, Australia friendly shipping? Uh, good question. And right now it used to be time was back in this, back when days were simpler that we could say, yeah, sure, we can do that. And for that first Kickstarter, we did a pretty good job with that. But in this day and age, because literally because of stuff like Brexit, because of shipping and how awful shipping is right now, which if you live in Australia and you buy American products, you know what I'm talking about. We cannot promise that these things are gonna be EU or Australia or internationally friendly. And that means usually that somebody besides you has to pay the VAT tax import duties and stuff like that. We have no idea how that's gonna work. And this stuff is changing a lot and it's changing very quickly. So especially for a book where the physical shipping isn't gonna happen until next year, we cannot say that it will be EU friendly. But if it can be done, we will try to figure it out. Will the new book have domains from Kingdoms and Warfare or new units, new, new army units from Kingdoms and Warfare? Maybe, but probably not. We wanna make sure that this book is as useful to the most number of people as possible. And having these cool options for a whole other set of rules that we have no, we don't know if you have Kingdoms and Warfare or if you're using them, I think that's bad bang for buck. I think there are better ways that we could use those pages, but I would expect to see domains for a lot of these guys and um, units for a lot of them just in some other product, maybe another, maybe an issue of Arcadia or another Kingdoms and Warfare supplement or an adventure that uses these. That would be great. I would love to see that. How much will the individual tchotchkes be individually? The t-shirt is 25 bucks. The pin is $12 and the miniature is 70 bucks. These will all be things you can add a la carte in the store once we launch once once we launch our pledge manager. So you could get in the system right now for like you pledge a dollar and you're in, and then you'll get an email when the when the pledge manager launches. And at that point, you can custom create your own pledge level. You could buy five miniatures if you want to, or three shirts, buy shirts for your friends, or buy two or three copies of the book or whatever. That's you know something you can do a la carte. Does Zornox have a base? I don't know why I said Pregnante. Does Zornox have a base? Uh, what about his little floating eyeball guys? Yes, they will have floating bases, which I think uh, they might be clear plastic, but we don't, I don't know that we have prototypes for those yet. They might just be regular plastic. So no promises there, but yeah, they'll each get their own base and each little eyeball will have a base so you can, you can, uh, you know, have them move independently of your overmind. We get this question all the time. Will you be selling STL files of these miniatures? 
nope, STL files are not part of our business model and they're not something that is a high or even medium priority for us. Our art director, Jason Hasenauer, is big into the 3D printing space. He has a he has a couple of 3D printers, I think. That's the kind of, he's really interested in how that technology is evolving. He has a lot of friends who are artists and sculptors and 3D modelers, and they're all super into 3D printing. And he backs, he's a patron of Patreons that's nothing but STL files that you buy and download and then print yourself. And so he's into that stuff. His attitude is just, if we get into STL files, they're going to be unique. They're going to be things that you can only get here in STL file form. They're not just going to be STL, STL files of our existing stuff. Can we see a mock-up of the special edition cover? It's the same right now. Right now, as far as we know, it's the same cover. It's just in a cool dust jacket. Like, for instance, this is the Kingdoms and Warfare limited edition. It's the same cover art, but it is on a lovely dust jacket. And it's got its own cool kind of faux leatherette with gold embossing on it. It's very neat. It's very dapper. It looks very cool. And this is sort of my assumption. It's got the MCDM kind of embossed on it. It's very cool looking. And I assume we're going to do the same thing for Flea Mortals. Um, we'll see if I can make it through this whole video without inadvertently calling it Free Mortals, which is a, a, a verbal tick I have developed. Um, and, but I realized that other companies like the Seattle company, their limited edition, have a completely different cover. And we might do something like that. We've never done that before, but we would like to. But we don't really know, especially in this day and age with physical products being sort of a bear to produce. Uh, we don't want to promise anything like that. So what we are promising is that it will be like this. Um, and if we can figure out a way to do something cooler or different, then then we will. A lot of these questions actually are people in chat or in various responses online saying, hey, hey, you didn't say anything about X. Are you going to do X? And the answer is usually no, because that's this, the book is the book and it's already going to be a, a, it's a lot of work. This is a very ambitious product and a very ambitious project. And just adding more and more stuff to it, while it would be a lot of fun and all that stuff we think is neat and cool, then that's scope creep and that pushes the book out and it means it would either it would cost more or we would lose money on it. So that's the reality on the ground for a lot of this stuff. A lot of folks want to know whether there's going to be an option in the pledge manager to add other MCDM products to their pledge. And these are people, these are international buyers who... Um, actually, they don't think of themselves as they think of themselves as domestic and MCDM are the international ones. But these are folks who live not in continental United States and they're trying to save on shipping. Right. So they're like, I would love to buy all your products in hardcover, but I don't want to pay shipping two or three times. Can I do it all in the pledge manager? And there is no facility for that. No, the answer is no. Uh, but once the books are all out and printed, which is going to be late 2023, then you'll just be able to buy them all in the store, add them all to your cart and pay for shipping once that way. Will there be new versions of the mundane critters like, you know, the like a horse or badgers and stuff like that in this book? And we don't have plans to do that, although because I don't really think there's anything wrong with the ones those that you already have, the ones of those that you already have. But um, I do see the need and the value there. And so if we have the time and the budget for it, that would be on the short list of stuff to add to the book. What about better options for druids with wild shape? Because the options in the core rules are kind of weak sauce. We agree. And I guess the answer is the same as the one above. It's it's sort of it's not something we are on the hook to do. Uh, we said everything we were on the hook to do in the video and in the Kickstarter page. But it, it's obvious that people want that. And so if there's time and money for it, we would like to do it. But that that's the answer for a lot of stuff and they all have to compete with each other and we're trying to avoid scope creep. One of the reasons we're so happy with this Kickstarter is that we kind of took a chance on something smaller in scope, not 21 minis in the Kickstarter, not 18 different pledge levels. There's only four pledge levels. I want it to be simple and easy. It's a simple pitch. And the flip side of that is it's, it is so successful. A lot of people want to see more. Well, we would like to give you more, but we don't know if it's going to fit in this monster book. Will the book be available in other languages? Uh, no, not in the first instance, but translations of our products into other languages is something that people have been asking for for a long time. And we would like to do it. It's just a question of how big is MCDM? Who here is going to handle that? Uh, right now we are somewhat severely understaffed, especially in the production department. And this would be a production issue. We'd have to have somebody here who was spearheading that initiative and finding the translators and making sure that they're reliable and that they're good at what they do. And we have much bigger fish to fry right now. So unfortunately, the answer for that is no. I think that's it. I think those are basically all the frequently asked questions. And if there are any questions that come up after this that we think warrant being added to the fact, 
They will be on our website. There'll be a link in the doobly-doo to the uh, soon-to-be-updated Frequently Asked Questions on the MCDM site because there's Kickstarter won't let you add questions to the fact after the campaign ends. So the website's it. Or I think even better would be heading over to our Discord and asking questions in the Flea Mortals channel there. We have an incredibly robust, active Discord that is in very, very well moderated. I think it's the best community online. It's Our moderators are amazing and they're super cool. And you can get pretty much any question you want uh, answered. If there is an answer for it, you can get it answered there pretty quickly, usually by other community members who are just trying to help out. There is actually one shout out I would like to uh, do here in this video, and that is the folks at Campaign Coins, who are a company that I have been buying products for now for a long, ever since I started playing Red Dragon Inn. They make the, you've, you've probably watched our Red Dragon Inn uh, live stream, and we have these dope ass coins that I bought, and I think they're an Australian company, and they make incredibly cool products. I very strongly encourage you to check them out. Link in the doobly-doo, and we partnered with them to make our pins, and I really actually sort of regret not bringing this up in the video, and the, that was just because I was swamped with other stuff, and it slipped my mind. But uh, the folks at Campaign Coins are super awesome, and if we do any more pins in the future, or, or really anything that's like metal related, it's probably going to be with the folks at Campaign Coins. So thanks to them. That's it, folks. If you have any questions, you can always ask them in the comments. Uh, we are pretty we pretty actively monitor our comments here on YouTube. And you just got a Dune video from me yesterday, and I think you're going to hear a little bit. You're going to hear a little chunk that I've excerpted from Twitch about. What happened when we tried to play uh, 20th level D&D here for the first time at MCDM it was only about two and a half hours. It's not a campaign or anything like that. We didn't even finish the encounter. We had a lot of fun. It was really cool. Thanks for watching. Thank you for supporting MCDM and everything we do. All we want to do is make more dope shit for you people. That is not a joke or an exaggeration. That's it. We have no shareholders. We have no investors. It's just you and me. That's it. And the other amazing people that I've shanghaied into working for us here. Uh, until next time, everybody, thanks for your support. Thanks for watching. Peace out.